Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Design with Ruzbe. Continuing with CSWA practice problems, today we'll work on question 2.6. Let's take a look at this question. So in this question, unit of measurement is millimeter gram second. Also, looking at this geometry, clearly this is not a symmetric geometry. We don't see a symmetry line here and we can see different features in different locations. You can see that we have the front view of the geometry, lots of information shown in this view. We have the 3D model, we have detail A, and we have right view. And you can find the thickness of the part in a right view. Now, my preference is to start with the front view. As I mentioned, lots of information there. So I can start with a 2D sketch from the front view, then I can use extruded boss feature and make the 3D model. So with this introduction, let's jump into SOLIDWORKS and start modeling this part. So in SOLIDWORKS, first thing first, we need to check unit of measurement. And you can see that we have correct unit of measurement, which is millimeter gram second. Next step is that we can click on a sketch, then use a sketch command. And then I'm going to choose front plane. Now here, all we need to do is to make a rough 2D sketch. And then after that, we can start adding dimensions and constraints. So let's do that. I can start with the line command. So from a sketch, I'm going to choose line command. And then here I start from the origin. I go up. Then I need another line like this. Next, I need an arc. So what I can do, I can click on arc command. I can click here and here is the arc. Then I need one line going from here to basically here, then another line, horizontal line basically, then I need another arc shape. So from a sketch, I can click on arc command. And then you can see from the 2D sketch that the center point of the arcs should be in line with the horizontal line. So I can click here, and then make one arc here, then I need another line. So click on line command, make a line like this. I also need another arc command. So here is the second arc. And finally, I'm going to close the geometry with another line command. So this is what we have. Okay, so now we have a 2D sketch, it's time to add constraint to this geometry. First of all, we know that we have the arc in the right corner. So it's always wise to use tangent relationship between the line and the arc. So what I can do, I can click on the arc, hold control, click on the top line, and then I'm going to choose tangent relationship. I repeat this process again, I click on the arc, hold control, click on the line. And then from the left side, I can choose tangent relationship. The other constraint that I have, as I mentioned, Looking at the geometry, we know that the center point of these two arcs must be in line with the horizontal line. So what I can do, I can click on this center point, hold control, click on the line, and I'm going to choose coincident. Same for the other arc. I can click on the center point, hold control, click on the horizontal line, and I'm going to choose coincident. Also, we need a tangent relationship between this line and two arcs. You can see that we have, we already have the tangent relationship for one. We just need to add it for the other one. So I click on the arc, I hold control, I click on the horizontal line, and then I'm going to choose tangent relationship. Okay. So now I added most of the relationships. If we think that we are missing something, we'll add it uh, later. But now let's focus on adding dimensions. First of all, I know that the length of this line should be 150 millimeters. So I can click on the smart dimension. I click on this line and this distance must be 150 millimeter. Also looking at the geometry, we know that the angle between this line and horizontal line should be 58 degrees. So I click on this line, I click on second line and this angle must be 58 degree. Next, let's focus on horizontal line. We know that the overall length from origin of the geometry to this right point should be 152 millimeters. So I click on a smart dimension, I click on the origin, I click on the second point and this distance must be 142 millimeter. 
Also, the distance between the center point of the geometry and the center point of the first arc must be 47 millimeters. So I can click on the smart dimension, click on the point, click on this point, and this must be 47 millimeter. The distance between two arcs, center point of first arc and the second arc, should be 52 millimeters. So I click on it, I click on the second one, and this distance must be 52 millimeters. Next, we can add the distance between the horizontal line and this line. We know that this distance should be 9 millimeters. So I can click on the horizontal line, the first one, and then I click on the second one, and this distance must be 9 millimeters. Now you can see that the bottom lines are fully defined. Let's focus on the other lines. Looking at the front view in the question, we also know that the angle between the inclined line, this line, and the horizontal line should be 108 degrees. So I click on the horizontal line, I click on the second line, and this angle must be 108 degrees. Okay. Looking at the front view, we can clearly see that this line, the right line, and the top line will be coincident somewhere in this location. And we have a distance defining that location. So what we can do here, we can click on a line command and let's draw two lines. This is the first one. And the second one is something like this. First of all, let's remove the excess part. So what I can do, I can click on trim entities and I remove this. Secondly, I want to make sure that both of these lines are tangent to the previous lines. So you can see that this is tangent to this line or they're kind of collinear. You can click on this line, hold control, click on a second line, and then you can choose collinear. It's basically same as having the tangent. And then I'm repeating that for the second one. I click on the line, I click on the second line, and I choose collinear. Now, because these lines are only for construction, what I can do, I can click on one line, and then from the options, you can see that I have an option saying construction geometry. Click on it, and now the line is changed to the construction line. Repeat this for the second one. So I click on the line, and I choose construction geometry. This basically tells SOLIDWORKS that these lines are only for helping us to make our geometry. Now, looking at the question, we know that the distance between the bottom point and this point must be 150 millimeter. So what I can do, I can click on a smart dimension, I click on this point, I click on top point, and then here this distance must be 150 millimeter. Great. Looking at the question, again, front view, we can see that the radius of this curve is 32 millimeters. So I click on the curve, and this radius must be 32 millimeter. Great. So now we have our geometry fully defined. Now it's time to focus on the last step, which is making a key shape part in the center of this geometry. To do this, we need to add a construction line. If you look at the front view, you can see that we have two points on two edges, right and a left edge. So let's first add those two points. To do this, I click on a sketch, and from the sketch tab, I'm gonna click on point command. And let's add one point here and a second point here. Now, looking at the front view, we know the distance between these two points and the bottom line of the geometry. For the right point, the distance is 82 millimeters. So I click on the smart dimension, I click on the point, I click on a bottom point, and this distance is 82 millimeter. For the left point, I know that the distance between this point and the origin of the geometry is 71 millimeters. So I add 71 millimeter. Now we know the location of those points. I can click on line command and connect those two points. Again, this line is for helping us with making a 2D sketch. So I click on it and I click on construction geometry to change the type of the line to construction line. And now I have the construction line made in my geometry. Let's focus on making the key shape in the center of this piece. To do this, I can click on circle command and then let's 
draw one circle here and let's draw the second one here also let's connect these two circles so I can click on line command and then from here I connect the line to this circle and I also draw a second line now looking at the geometry we know that these two lines must be parallel to the construction line so what I can do I can click on the first line hold control click on the construction line and then I'm gonna choose parallel I repeat this process again I click on the bottom line hold control click on the center line and then I'm gonna choose parallel constraint next step is adding radius to these circles so what I can do I can click on a smart dimension the radius of the left circle is 17 millimeter which means that the diameter should be 34 millimeter I click here 2 times 17 millimeter and also I can repeat this process for the right circle so click on it and the radius of the circle is 7 millimeter which means that the diameter should be 14 millimeter also I know that the distance between the center point of the left circle and this point must be 41 millimeters so I click here and I add 41 millimeter and finally I know that the distance between the center point of these two circles should be 55 millimeters so let's add that dimension I click on center point of the left circle click on the center point of the right circle and then here I'm gonna have 55 millimeter as a distance great so now you can see that we have a fully defined geometry let's clean up this sketch and remove extra lines to do this from the sketch tab I'm gonna click on trim entities and then here I'm gonna remove this line this one this one and finally this one great last step is adding fillet to the key shape to do this I click on the sketch tab and I'm gonna choose fillet command and here the radius according to the detail a in the question should be 8 millimeters so I change the radius to 8 and I choose this corner this corner and I click on OK and that's it great so now we have every details defined in this geometry we have a fully defined geometry we are ready to use extruded bus feature and make the final shape to do this click on feature click on extruded bus and now you can choose the contour I choose the contour and the thickness I want according to the right view of the geometry should be 8 millimeter so I add 8 millimeter click on OK and that's it that's the final geometry that we are looking for so it's time to check the total volume make sure that this is the correct answer so first let's go back to the question and find the total volume in a question in the question you can see that the total volume is 109,681 cubic millimeters let's go back to SOLIDWORKS and check the total volume in SOLIDWORKS to check the total volume you can click on evaluate tab click on mass properties and here you can see the total volume the total volume we found is 109,720 cubic millimeters you can see that this answer is different from what's shown in a question as a matter of fact we have 40 cubic millimeters difference however this difference is almost nothing so let's let's calculate the difference that we have between our answer and the answer shown in the question first so the difference that we discussed is about 40 cubic millimeters so let's divide 40 cubic millimeters by the total volume that we have 109 720 and then let's multiply this by 100 so I can change it to the percent you can see that the difference is actually less than 0.04%. This is absolutely nothing. This is within the tolerance error. However, it's not exactly what's shown in a question. I understand this. So let's take a look at the details that we have in this question to make sure that we haven't made a mistake. Uh, we want to make sure that our modeling is correct. There's always a chance that the number that we can see in a questionnaire is wrong so let's take a look at the details that we have to do this I click on a sketch I click on edit sketch and let's check every dimension 47 is correct 52 is correct 
overall length is 142, that's correct. This angle should be 108, that's correct. 58 is also correct. We have overall length of 150. Same here from the bottom point to this point is 150. The radius is 32 millimeter, that's correct. Now, the distance between the bottom line and the top line, you can see that it's 9 millimeter, so that one is also correct. Let's focus on the centerpiece here. So, first of all, these two points, right point is located at 82 millimeter, that's correct, left point at 71, that's correct. Now, looking at the features we have here, you can see that the distance between the center point to this point is 41, that's correct, the radius is 17 millimeter. That means that the total diameter should be 34 millimeter. So that's correct. The radius for the fillet is 8 millimeter for both of them, so that's a correct one. The distance 55 and the radius for the small circle should be 7 millimeters. That means that the total diameter is 14 millimeter. Okay, so as you can see, every single dimensions that we have here is correct. So this one, there's no problem with the 2D sketch. Let's go back to the bus extrude, click on edit features. So the total thickness that we assigned here is 8 mm. This is exactly the same as what's shown in the right view of the geometry. Click on OK. So the bottom line here is that I wanted to show you that we haven't made a mistake. It's just the error that we have between our answer and the answer shown in the question. As I showed you, the error is less than 0.04%, which is absolutely nothing. Um, but I wanted to make you sure that there's no problem with our modeling approach. Okay, I think that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or feedback, especially about the difference that we've seen between two answers, please let me know in the comments. Thanks again for watching. My name is Ruzbe. Hope to see you again soon in the next videos.